السلام عليكم uh, today we're going to talk about the second part of somatic sensation which are pain and thermal sensation uh, our objectives is to define pain classify its types usually pain is uh, of two types fast or slow or sometimes called acute fast and slow chronic and uh, uh, describe its uh, characters is it either it is somatic pain or visceral pain I describe the mechanism of pain and its receptors uh, follow its pathways to the cerebral cortex and characterize this pathway there are usually two pathways one for the fast pain and one for the uh, slow pain explain the pain suppression system this is called the endogenous uh, opiate and the gate control theory that uh, acts to suppress the feeling of pain describe uh, uh, the pathway for fair pain which is for visceral pain and create a complete picture of the thermal uh, sensation now pain is a, a feeling of discomfort pain occurs whenever there is tissue damage so what excites pain are uh, damaged tissue that releases certain chemicals or whatever pain is usually protective in nature so if you feel pain you try to uh, remove or bring yourself away from the painful stimuli that's uh, why pain is almost non-adapting uh, sensation because suppose that it's adapting sensation if it is due to damage and after a while there is adaptation the damage will continue and you will not try to remove yourself from a painful stimuli so causes the individual to remove painful stimulus there are two types of pain one is called fast pain and the other called slow pain fast pain is felt uh, very uh, fast after the injury uh, after the stimulus it is usually called sometimes sharp pain or pricking pain or acute pain or electric pain is very fast and it's, uh, it's it's so acute that it looks like it's electric pain like if you uh, have your elbow uh, touching uh, the ulnar nerve there slow pain begins after a second or more and uh, it is usually called throbbing pain or aching pain something that you cannot describe that's uh, aching throbbing nauseating uh, chronic so these are the natures of the uh, other called slow pain uh, all pain receptors are free nerve endings there are three categories of receptors uh, either they are sensitive to mechanical stimuli or thermal stimuli or the other is called polymodal stimuli polymodal that is sensitive to all uh, mechanical thermal besides that they are sensitive to chemicals so the polymodal they are sensitive to three chemical thermal and mechanical so can be stimulated by mechanical like a stretch thermal temperature and chemicals that are released from the damaged tissue the chemicals that are uh, released from the uh,
demekti şu an excite pain receptors are bradykine and this is very important substance and you know bradykine is formed from uh, kinin uh, after the action of catechrine enzymes serotonin another substance histamine potassium ions uh, uh, ion acids acetylcholine and proteolytic enzyme these substances that they can excite pain receptors now prostaglandin and substance B they enhance pain by uh, increasing its the sensitivity of pain endings so they don't pain uh, prostaglandin and substance B they don't cause pain they decrease the threshold for pain they increase the sensitivity of the receptors for pain so that person will feel pain easily okay but they do not excite pain directly they lower the threshold for pain pain receptors and their stimulation pain receptors do not adapt they are almost non-adapting and uh, you know why it should be not adapting because uh, it's due to damage of tissue they adapt the tissue damage will continue and this will cause in the end if there is say if there is a painful tool down due to damage after uh, this pain if it, it adapts then the damage to the tool continues and it might end with gangrene so pain receptors they don't adapt as long as there is tissue damage you feel pain and you since it is protective you try to uh, get away from the painful conditions the rate of tissue damage is the cause of uh, of the pain most of individuals let's say feel pain around 45 degrees centigrade so look to that experiment here uh, they say got 100 people and uh, expose them to different temperature and see when they feel pain most of the people here most of the people they feel pain around 45 degrees most of the people some people they have higher threshold for pain they don't feel pain unless they are exposed to higher temperature other people they have low threshold for pain they feel pain at even lower temperatures so this is the experiment as you see the frequency or the number of people uh, that they feel pain they feel it around uh, uh, 45 degrees so here the rate of tissue damage is the cause of pain most of people feel pain around the 45 degrees uh, if you get the extract from damaged tissue and you inject it to a normal people under the skin they start to feel pain so it's it's as if there is uh, some chemicals that are released from a damaged tissue and these chemicals they do excite the uh, free nerve endings the most important substance is bradykinin they cause they cause the most pain and maybe the single most important agent for causing tissue damage type of pain bradykinin other substances still their histamine serotonin acids proteolytic enzymes they do cause pain do but bradykinin one of the most important one uh, also the local increase in potassium in, con in, in, in concentration and the action of enzymes that contribute to pain too acids they can excite uh, also these are the chemicals so as we said last time uh, most of the people when they did an experiment say they got 100 people 100 person they exposed them to different temperature they found that most of the people they feel pain around the 45 degrees where tissue damage is maximum 
but some other people they do feel pain at higher temperature others they do feel pain at lower temperature so those people here this people here are they have high threshold for pain high threshold and those people here they have low threshold for pain okay Now the pathway for pain is uh, the pain and temperature they run through the anterior lateral spinothalamic pathway, anterior lateral spinothalamic pathway. As we have said in discussing the mechanical uh, sensation, the spino, uh, the anterior lateral spinothalamic pathway, besides pain and temperature, it transmits crude mechanical receptive sensation, crude touch, crude pressure, tickle, and itching. And the most important thing they transmit also pain. So uh, from these receptors, the efferent neuron or the first order neuron of this pathway enters the uh, posterior horn, which is the uh, sensory horn, and then the synapse at the posterior horn and after the synapse they might have interneurons before they cross to the other side and they ascend in the anterior and lateral column of the spinal cord so they ascend in the lateral so as you see here the crossing is anterior to the uh, uh, central canal so as you see here, the crossing is at the level of the spinal cord. If you remember that on the dorsal column, medial lumniscal system, the crossing is at the level of the medulla. So here, if you have transection, if you have damage of one half of the spinal cord here, this is damage, say, then uh, uh, the loss of pain and uh, temperature and crude sensation are from the other side where these have their neurons their neurons coming here and they synapse here they have to travel here and they cannot travel up because there is damage so the uh, loss of crude uh, pain, temperature, crude touch, crude pressure, mm, thermal sensation and pain is from the contralateral side of the uh, spinal cord damage. In, in, in case of the dorsal column, it is from the ipsilateral side. And then the second order neuron goes to the thalamus. Where is the thalamus? It's the basal, uh, basal complex. That's the VBL and VBM, ventral posterior lateral and ventral posterior. Besides that, some pain fibers, they go to the intralaminar nuclei. And the one that goes to the intralaminar nuclei, especially they are important for the emotional aspect of uh, pain. So this uh, track on the nerve impulses, uh, uh, impulses related to crude touch, crude pressure. What do we mean by crude? Crude, we mean it poorly localized. When we said fine touch, well localized. So the uh, sensation that they can uh, here uh, uh, travel through this tract is our uh, crude pressure, crude touch, pain, warm and cold, this is different temperature, itching, and tickle sensation, and this is called sometimes sens sexual sensation, from the, lung, from the limbs, neck, uh, trunk, and posterior uh, head of the, and posterior head, to where they go to the primary uh, somatosensory area that is found in the post-central gyrus. Post-central gyrus, you remember the post-central gyrus is found uh, posterior to the central sulcus in the parietal lobe, in the parietal lobe. 
On the other hand, the pre-central gyrus, the area in front of the central gyrus called pre-central gyrus, it is the primary uh, motor area, primary motor area. So the primary sensory area is located in the post-central gyrus, posterior to the central gyrus. Since there are two types of pain, one is called uh, slow and the other called fast, there are uh, two pathways, one for the fast pain, and the fast pain it is fast because it is transmitted through fast conducting fiber, this is the smallest myelinated fiber, A delta, with a speed that might be from 6 to 30 meters per second. On the other hand, slow pain is transmitted through type C, which is our unmyelinated fiber with a slower speed, 0.5 to 2 meters per second. Now, fast pain fibers are transmitted in a track called neospinothalamic, neo neo or neospinothalamic, and slow pain are transmitted in a track called paleo, paleo, which is old, paleo spinothalamic paleo-spinothalamic tract. Now, what are, if you want to compare fast pain and slow pain, or how you can compare them? Uh, regarding the uh, receptors here, Fast pain occurs stimulation of mechanical and thermal nociceptors. Slow pain occurs because of stimulation of polymodal receptors. Polymodal receptors that are sensitive to three kinds of sensations besides mechanical, besides mechanical and thermal, so mechanical and thermal and chemical uh, fast pain is usually carried through uh, a delta fiber small the smallest myelinated fiber slow pain carried through unmyelinated c fibers uh, procedures, it produces very sharp breaking uh, and uh, electric pain, produces dull, uh, aching, throbbing, burning, that is very hard to describe. Usually fast pain is easily localized and slow pain is poorly localized, although the localization is not that uh, as perfect as in the dorsal column system, but relatively, the fast pain is easily localized and the slow pain is poorly localized because it's transmitted through slow fibers, you see, and fast, easily localized because it's transmitted at <coughs> slow myelinated fiber. The fast pain, <coughs> the fast pain occurs first and the slow pain occurs after a second, but on the other hand, it persists for longer time and it is accumulating. It starts as a slight or light pain, then it aggravates, it increases in intensity, increases in intensity, it becomes uh, really uh, annoying, like uh, slow pain, like uh, teeth pain. When you have a teeth pain, say you have it at night before you sleep, you go, yeah, this is slow amount, this is something light. I can go tomorrow to the doctors. But you wake up around two o'clock in the morning having very annoying, strong pain because that pain, tooth pain, is usually slow pain. So it aggravates by time after hours, the pain is becoming annoying, it's becoming too strong that you can withstand it. So this is the kind of pain that is slow pain.
past pain is acute and it subsides easily it does not aggravate this is the uh, types of pain you have this is a delta fiber they, they transmit uh, fast pain The other one is the uh, C fiber here. It transmits slow pain. Look here uh, why it is slow and fast. This fast pain is transmitted to A delta and in the posterior horn of the spinal cord once it enters the posterior it does not synapse too many synapses it's one or two synapses here one or two synapses and then it crosses to the other side anterior to the central canal and it uh, ascends through the anterior and lateral aspect of the spinal cord okay so because it does not have too many synapses you know each synapse have what we call it synaptic delay so if you have more synapses there is more delays and that's why this kind of uh, sensation is going to be slow look on the other hand to the slow pain slow pain starts through c fiber c fiber already are slower than a delta and then in the uh, posterior horn they have too many synapses too many synapses also they have divergence and then they cross to the other side and ascend <coughs> the second order neuron ascends to the thalamus at the ventrobasal complex of the thalamus since there are too many synapses in the posterior horn for the slow pain it means there are too many synaptic delays this will make this kind of pain slow besides it is transmitted through C fiber so as you see here, that's why slow and fast. The uh, fast pain is transmitted through a tract called neospinothalamic tract, and the slow pain is transmitted through a, a tract called paleospinothalamic tract. Paleo. Paleo it means older. New and neo it means new. Now look and see uh, about the neospinothalamic tract. The neospinothalamic tract, on entering the cord, pain fibers may travel up or down one or two or three segments. So after it enters the spinal cord here, it goes up or down one or two segments or three segments sometimes okay then it crosses the midline and uh, before it crosses it, it, it terminates on the neurons of the dorsal horn the second order neuron crosses immediately to the opposite side anterior to the central canal and passes to the brain in the anterior lateral column of the spinal cord as anterior lateral spinal thalamic they go where they go to the ventrobasal part of the thalamus vbl vbm ventroposterior lateral and ventroposterior medial and uh, it's also some of it goes to the intralaminar but this this kind of pain this fast pain does not go to the intralaminar the other pain go to the intralaminar now when they go up some neurons terminate at the reticular formation of the brainstem particular substance but most of it most of the fiber they <coughs> go all the way to the ventrobasal complex of the thalamus less than 25 percent of the fibers they end at the reticular formation of the brainstem most of the fiber they go to the ventrobasal complex now third order neuron goes from the ventrobasal complex to the uh, uh, 
cerebral cortex to the somato primary somato sensory cortex now in the thalamus around 50 percent of the fibers they end in the thalamus so one one uh, 25 or less a little bit less so most of the fibers uh, uh, they reach the thalamus some of the fibers they end in the thalamus and some fibers they uh, complete their journey to the cerebral cortex and this what what completes the fibers that complete its it travel to the journey to the cerebral cortex they are important for localization of pain now the importance of this is that even if the cerebral cortex the post central gyrus is destroyed that person will still feel pain still feel pain at what at the level of the thalamus at the level of the thalamus but the localization of pain is becoming too poor okay New spiny thalamic tract, it's uh, the tract that travels, that uh, conducts fast, sharp pain, uh, can be localized well. However, fast pain must be stimulated with other tactile receptors for uh, pain to be highly localized. The other that are using the dorsal column uh, medial lemniscal system. Look to the paleo-spinothalamic transmitted through type C and myelinated fibers, so this is slow. And in the uh, substantia gelatinosa, lamina 2 and 3 of the spinal cord, they make one or more than one connections before they uh, give the rise to the second order neuron and ascend in the anterior lateral aspect of the spinal cord. So here the synapse, too many synapses in the uh, spinal cord, that's why they are slow, they have too many synaptic delays. Each synapse has synaptic delays, sometimes that passes between the input and the output. Now only it, uh, most of the fibers, most of the fibers, more than 75% of the fibers, they end at the reticular formation of the brainstem. And what these fibers that end at the articular formation of the brainstem, they are important that uh, activates the reticular activating system that's found in the brainstem. Uh, look what I have said a little bit. We said that dental veins start as slight vein. Uh, you can stand it. That's why you think that you can go next day or next morning to the doctor for this but because low pain is aggravating it becomes too strong since it's becoming too strong it goes when uh, through its pathway up it uh, ends at the reticular formation of the brainstem if it ends at the reticular formation of the brainstem is going to stimulate the reticular activating system and awakes the uh, cerebral cord. That's why the person they are awake, awakened from from the uh, slow pain uh, at night, having very severe pain. So uh, more than seventy five percent of the fiber they terminate in the in the particular formation of the brainstem. Less than twenty five percent of the fibers. Less than 25% of the body, they terminate in the thalamus, where in the ventrobasal complex, and but also in the intralaminar nuclei of the thalamus. Most terminate diffusely in the reticular nuclei of the medulla, pons, and midbrain, mesencephalon. Some of these fibers they go to the uh, bretectal area of midbrain, bretectal area of the brain and go to the very aqueductal gray around the aqueduct of uh, uh, the uh, fourth ventricle here aqueduct very aqueductal gray matter okay so this is where they end now the what ends in the articular formation of the medulla and pons and midbrain they are important uh, for conscious for wake up 
it waking it it awaken up the person through simulation of reticular activating system RAS reticular activating system that they go to the pretectal area of the midbrain and very aqueduct uh, gray here these two areas are important for activation of analgesia system analgesia system or descending analgesia system anal Various biomethalamic tract, uh, lower termination important to, uh, 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 to appreciate the suffering type of pain, lower termination. From the lower reticular area of the brain, some neuron stem, brain stem neurons project to the intralaminar nuclei, intralaminar nuclei of the thalamus, hypothalamus, and uh, other basal brain region. These are important for the emotional aspect of this of pain emotional aspect of pain uh, the paleospinal thalamic are poorly localized because they are transmitted through slow conducting fibers they have too many synapses in the spinal cord often to just affected limb or part of uh, the, our body. Now look here uh, to these systems. This is the fast pain, new spinal thalamic. Look to their track, they go to the ventrobasal complex. And from there they go to the somatosensory area of the cerebral cortex and the thalamus. Look here to the slow pain, most of the fiber they end at the reticular formation of the brainstem, that they are important for activation of the reticular activation system, to activate the cerebral cortex, to awaken that person. And some fibers, they go to the uh, ventrobasal complex and the intralaminar nuclei. What goes to the intralaminar nuclei are uh, also they go to the hypothalamus, they are important for the emotional aspect of pain. And very little fiber, they uh, complete their pathway to the cerebral cortex. That's why this kind of pain is, is poorly localized, because its fibers, they don't go there to the uh, cerebral cortex. Now the appreciation of being removal of the somatic sensory area of the cortex does not destroy the ability to perceive pain. Why? Because there are a lot of pain perception that comes from the thalamus. But the localization is poor. Pain impulses to lower areas cause conscious perception of pain. Where? To the thalamus.
Therefore, cortex probably is important for determining the quality of pain and location. The quality and localization too. Stimulation of the reticular areas of brain stem and intra laminar nuclei where pain fiber terminate causes widespread arousal of the nervous system RAS reticular activation system reticular activation system so these are important to uh, awaken up that person who is sleepy that's why people they are awaking up from sleep because of slow pain aggravating pain analgesia system of the brain stem of the spinal brain and spinal cord now the analgesia system of the brain and spinal cord uh, sometimes it's called uh, endogenous analgesia system or endogenous opiate system opiate because it uses the substances that are similar to the opium derivative opium uh, heal the tree from where morphine is extracted uh, or the that's called these drugs that are similar to the morphine called opiate opiate so, so the brain has a, a the capability to suppress pain by these endogenous analgesia analgesics that are secreted in the brain uh, now stimulation uh, of the periaqueductal gray matter periaqueduct sends axon to the raphe magnus nucleus in the medulla oblongata and the nucleus paragigantocellularis from the Raphe magnus and paragigantocellularis neurons they send axons down to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord and these synapse with interneurons that secrete uh, in, in, in secrete endogenous opiate endogenous opiate we will come to the endogenous opiate we have three kinds of endogenous opiate we have encephalins and encephalins are pentapeptides they are five amino acid peptide very small peptide but they can suppress pain they are called endogenous opiate they do uh, bind to the receptors for opiate morphine or pethidine or whatever and uh, these are two kinds of encephalins either one is called leucine encephalin and the other called methionine encephalin and there are the other encephalins called dynorphin and dynorphin is around 200 times more active than morphine even and the third is called endorphin or beta endorphin which is a, a, a Split from the proobio uh, melanocorticotropin, that the the patent or the large protein from where ACTH adrenocorticotropic hormone is derived. That large protein is called bro hormone. If you remember, bro hormone is called proobio, so it gives opiate. Proobio melano, it gives MSH corticotropin given is ACTH so as you see here uh, when the uh, pain fibers coming and they end at the very ventricular uh, nuclei very aqueductal or very tectal nuclei here they go and stimulate uh, neurons that secrete that secrete encephalins these descend down to the medulla oblongata 
and the uh, or, or bones the upper medulla and lower bones area lower medulla and uh, upper medulla and lower bones and these interneurons here they secrete the descending neuron they secrete encephalin they synapse with uh, the uh, neurons from the raphe magnus nucleus or gigantocellularis nucleus and then this the, or the other order neuron they descend down to the spinal cord and they secrete serotonin it's called serotonergic neuron and this synapses uh, uh, through entering neurons here in the spinal cord that releases encephalin and this encephalin neurons here they synapse presynaptically to the uh, fibers that uh, s uh, transmit pain and these through presynaptic inhibition they decrease the release of the neurotransmitter or neuropeptides that is used for uh, as a neurotransmitter for pain which is substance P so uh, stimulation of these interneurons the encephalin fibers in the spinal cord they do presynaptic inhibition to the uh, pain fibers and then the pain fibers will decrease its secretion from the uh, uh, neurotransmitter or neuropeptides called substance P. So this is how it works. If it suppresses the pain transmission, then through the anterior lateral spinothalamic pathway, pain fibers are uh, decreased. Now this descending tract is apsilateral tract. It comes from the right side to the right side of the spinal cord. It comes from the left side to the left side of the spinal cord. So it is an apsilateral tract. Okay. This is uh, how it works, the same thing here. This is in the midbrain, very aqueductal gray and pretectal nucleus. This is the uh, uh, neurons, inhibitory neurons, that are going to stimulate the obiate uh, interneurons that secretes encephalin. And then this neuron, they uh, do descend to the medulla oblongata in the uh, upper medulla and lower bones and uh, uh, they stimulate the neurons that secrete serotonin then the raphe magnus nucleus and the one that secretes serotonin stimulates interneuron here interneuron that secrete encephalins and this interneurons inhibit this nociceptive efferent uh, through presynaptic inhibition and decreases the release of a uh, neurotransmitter which is substance P from these pain fibers and as you see it is a, an epsilateral tract epsilateral tract okay from same side it suppresses the pain that coming from this same side before it goes to the other side of the spinal cord. Now, uh, also, this is the same thing how it works. Look here to the painful stimuli, stimulates the free nerve endings. They run through afferent pain fiber. In the spinal cord here, the afferent pain fiber releases substance P, and substance P is a, a neuropeptide, neuropeptide, and this neuropeptide uh, uh, as a neuropeptide, substance P causes prolongation of the stimulation. Substance P stimulates the uh, in the spinal cord stimulates the pain conducting fibers 
that ascends upward through its pathway it goes and stimulates the reticular activating system and this is as we said this system is very important for wakefulness to alert that person at the same time from there they go to the thalamus from the thalamus and the reticular activating system they go to the hypothalamic limbic system and this fiber that they go to the hypothalamus they are very important for behavioral and emotional responses to pain behavioral and emotional responses to pain now in the thalamus you might have perception of pain but localization of pain is very important to go to where it goes to the uh, cerebral cortex this is the uh, general pathway of the fibers now look here to its uh, uh, endogenous uh, opiate system now when the fibers they come to the reticular formation here uh, it comes uh, it goes to the very aqueductal gray it goes to the reticular formation and you remember reticular formation upper uh, upper medulla lower bones in the raphae magnus nucleus here raphae magnus nucleus and from the raphae magnus nucleus these sending fibers they secrete here uh, serotonin and they synapse with fibers that secrete uh, uh, opiate endogenous opiate and the opiate once they are secreted from interneurons they uh, cause presynaptic inhibition for the uh, fibers that transmit pain here and secrete substance p and this presynaptic inhibition they it will decrease the release of substance p if substance p uh, amount is decreased then the transmission of pain impulse to the uh, brain is blocked so this system is called endogenous analgesia system or endogenous opiate system opiate as i said three main opiates enkephalin with its two types methionine enkephalin and leucine enkephalin these are pentapeptide dynorphin which is around 200 times more active than morphine and endorphin beta endorphin all these are uh, used as uh, trans neurotransmitters in this system so this is how it works now the same thing here nociceptive stimulus then uh, that through the afferent neuron it secretes substance p now the descending fiber from this endogenous opiate system stimulate enkephalin and through uh, postsynaptic inhibition and presynaptic inhibition even three through uh, postsynaptic and uh, here postsynaptic and presynaptic inhibition here it decreases the uh, the release of substance p here and it decreases the uh, transmission of pain from the uh, transmitting uh, neurons from transmitting neuron okay so these are the same thing these are just sketched to uh, illustrate how pain fibers are uh, blocked through from here and from here this sketch this is enkephalin fibers serotonin fibers and uh, this is the interneurons that secrete enkephalins or secrete uh, an opiate endogenous opiate in the spinal cord
now uh, an analgesia system of the brain spinal cord higher brain levels very ventricular nuclei in the high of the hypothalamus and the medial four brain bundles can activate the periaqueductal gray because the fibers they go to the hypothalamus periventricular and medial nuclei as i said they activate the periaqueductal gray and peritectal nuclei and this activation of these nuclei here cause the descending pathway of the uh, endogenous analgesia system endogenous analgesia system So pain suppression, uh, nerve fibers in the periventricular nuclei and periaqueductal gray secrete encephalin at the nerve ending. Nerve fibers from the raphe magnus that receive the information from the encephalin, they secrete serotonin at their endings. The serotonin uh, synapse with entering neurons in the spinal cord that secrete encephalin and encephalin is uh, believed to cause both pre and post synaptic inhibition of the type c and type d type a delta type c and type a delta pain fibers where they synapse in the dorsal horn and just to remind you that this system is an epsilateral system epsilateral system okay uh, how an endogenous opiate has been thought of you remember that opiates, morphine, and its uh, derivatives or substances that are derived from opium, they go and suppress pain. They are given during anesthesia to suppress pain or during uh, any other cause that they have pain. So to think of some thing external exogenous and have receptors in our body it is difficult because subhanahu wa ta'ala will not produce receptors for and for substance that is not found in our body so they thought that since opiate morphine and its derivative they have receptors in our body in the brain there must be certain substances that work like opiate or that have res uh, their receptors similar to, to the morphine receptors and in the 1970s around 1979 it was discovered that an injection of small quantities of morphine into an area around their third ventricle produces profound analgesia this started the search for morphine receptors morphine receptors and they found that the brain yes the brain secretes morphine like or what we call, what we call it opiate like substances that are called endogenous opiate all are broke break down products of three large molecules proobium melanocortin this will produce uh, endorphin This produce encephalin and this produce dynorphin and as I said last time dynorphin is around 200 times more active or dynorphin so that is three types encephalin can be leucine encephalin and met encephalin the major opiate substances are beta endorphin met and leucine methanine and encephalin leucine encephalin dynorphin the encephalins and dynorphins are found in the brainstem spinal cord 
Beta endorphin is found in the hypothalamus and pituitary. Beta, beta endorphin. And beta endorphins come from, as you see here, it comes from the obro, obio, obio, melanocorticone. So this will MSH. This will give ACTH. And this will give beta endorphin, okay? Function of the opiate system to suppress pain during time of stress, an important part of organism responses to the emergency in reduction of responsiveness to pain, effective indifference, predation, dominance, dominance and adaptation to environmental challenge. The opiate, there might be uh, the substances that are released during acupuncture. So acupuncture here, acupuncture could work through stimulation of the system acupuncture or Chinese needle that if you stimulate certain areas of our body these areas they go to the brain and stimulate the brain to secrete this uh, endogenous opiate this is the one of the theories about acupuncture okay pain intact pain and tactile fiber there are other theories that's called uh, the uh, gate theory for pain suppression stimulation of type a beta sensory fibers from the peripheral tactile can suppress transmission of pain signal this is called the gate control so this is a mechanical theory not chemical mechanical theory mechanism is the type is a type of lateral inhibition of the pain fibers by the sensory fibers mechanism of action of massage liminin limi lini means electrical stimulation of the skin electrical stimulation of the skin now if you have pain sometimes you can scratch it you scratch the pain to uh, suppress the feeling of pain if you scratch the area of pain you stimulate large tactile receptors so stimulation of these large tactile receptors it was found that it might suppress the feeling of pain and this is called gate control theory or gate control this is a mechanical theory to suppress so suppression of pain can be by stimulation of the a beta fibers by scratching them the stimulation of these tactile fibers these are the pain fibers C fibers say their uh, nuclei are found in the dorsal root ganglia they synapse at the dorsal horn with the, uh, the sensory uh, 
sensor in the second order neuron that transmits pain okay ascending pathway uh, this is the pain tonically active inter in inhibitory interneuron if this in interneuron is active is going to uh, suppress pain how you can activate this neuron we can see how it activates this neuron this is uh, stimulus strong pain that can uh, uh, strong pain from diverging fiber it can inhibit the tonically active interneuron if the tonically active interneuron is inhibited then this uh, pain feeling is going to be felt so here sometimes here the pain feeling the feeling of pain is inhibited by this tonically active interneurons so if you have some kind of small pain that's why people are different in their threshold of pain some people they have these tonically active uh, interneurons are more active than others if they are more active then the threshold for pain is going to be larger stronger too much higher if these tonically active inhibitory interneuron are not that active then the threshold for pain is lower Here, as you see, this is if the pain is very strong, sometimes this uh, diverging fiber from the afferent neurons, uh, the first order neuron, they go and inhibit the tonically active. If this inhibited, it means there is no more inhibition on the pain uh, transmission of the pain fiber, and that person will feel pain, especially if the pain is very strong, is very strong. Now this is the general sketch for the uh, gate control theory. Now this is the alpha A delta fibers and C fibers. They transmit pain. And uh, if they transmit pain, they inhibit. Usually they inhibit the, the gate cell here, the gate cell. And they go and stimulate the transmitting cell and then you feel pain here, pain response. Now, stimulation of the A alpha or A beta, which is a tactile mechanical mechanoreceptors here. Mechanoreceptors. The mechanoreceptors, they go and stimulate the G-cells. They go and stimulate the G-cells. If the G-cells is stimulated, it goes and inhibit presynaptic inhibition to the pain fibers on the T-cells. And this inhibition will inhibit the T-cells. It will no more in stimulation of the transmitting cells. And that person will its pain are inhibited so uh, stimulate at the same time where a delta fiber and c fiber are stimulated if you stimulate these mechanoreceptors a alpha and beta by mechanical touch tactile receptors the tactile receptors it's supposed to be that they stimulate the g gate cell g cell gate cell and these g cells or gate cell the one that we have since the same tonically active the G-cells goes and inhibit the uh, pain fibers that is uh, going to presynaptic inhibition. That's going to decrease their uh, s uh, release of the neurotransmitter, which is substance B. And then uh, it will lower the stimulation of the transmitting cells. Lower or might be block the transmission of the uh, T-cells. So if this is blocked, it means that you're not going to feel pain. This is the theory around it. This is a sketch for the theory. Uh, the same thing here. Pain fiber C and the same stimulation at the same time if you stimulate 
touch or tactile receptor through A alpha or A beta. This will stimulate these tonically active uh, neurons. These tonically active will uh, presynaptic inhibition on the uh, pain fiber or postsynaptic on the transmitting cells. They uh, inhibit the transmission of fibers, the transmission of pain at the transmitting cells to the brain. So pain, painful stimuli decreased by modulation. So here, this this one, the tonically active uh, interneuron, supposed to be G cells, G cells or gate cells. This is the theory around it, theory around the uh, control. Uh, now, uh, what about visceral pain? Now, pain from the visceral, pain from visceral organs. Usually they are not felt uh, as if it's coming from that area because there are no representation of our viscera in the cerebral cortex. So when there is stimulation of the cerebral cortex, the cerebral cortex feels the pain as if it is coming from a somatic area. And this is the uh, essence of what we talked about in dermatomes, what we talked about in uh, the segments of the spinal cord. You see, now the viscera are not supplied by somatic nerves, they are supplied by visceral nerves, by autonomic nerves. So autonomic nerves here from the viscera they enter at the same segment from where the visceral part is derived from the same like skin part. Example, say if the heart is uh, uh, derived from C8, T1, T1, T2, so C8 segment, T1, thoracic 1 and thoracic 2 and it is supplied by autonomic nerves at the same time the left upper limb left skin left left upper limb skin upper limb skin that is derived from ectoderm of C8, T1, T2 is supplied by somatic nerves or skeletal nerves or somatic nerves. They enter at the same segment of the autonomic nerves they enter from the heart and they synapse with the same second interneuron that transmits pain from the skin and they go there, they go to the where? to the cerebral cortex where they go to the cerebral cortex this is the upper limb representation in the cerebral cortex left upper limb in fact left so a pain from the heart is going to stimulate the second order neuron that has the same connection with the uh, nerves that coming from the left upper limb. So to the cerebral cortex, the cerebral cortex thinks that the pain is coming from the left side, left upper limb. Although the uh, pain is coming from the uh, heart. So this kind of pain, visceral pain, is called referred pain. So visceral pain is felt as referred pain, okay? 
like in like the kidney here the kidney enter the spinal cord at the same uh, the same segment from where our loin skin from our loin is coming the synapse with the second order neuron here the same second order neuron from the autonomic nerve that's coming from the kidney or the autonomic nerve that's coming from our loin when they go to the cerebral cortex the cerebral cortex thinks that the pain is coming from our loin from the back our lower back loin region so this is a pain from the kidney a pain from kidney okay and this is called referred pain from kidney. So here we can study the areas of referred pain. This is the heart. The sympathetic or parasympathetic fiber, the sensory fiber that's coming from the heart, they synapse at the same neuron from where the skin of the left upper limb is coming. When it goes to the cerebral cortex, the cerebral cortex thinks that the pain is coming from the skin of the left upper limb because the heart does not have a representation. What is represented in the cerebral cortex is the somatic area, is not the visceral area. Okay. So this is referred pain. Now referred and visceral pain from the internal organs that is perceived to originate from distant area of the skin because the skin is has a representation in the cerebral cortex mechanism is thought to be intermingling of second order neuron from the skin and the viscera so the second order neuron here uh, synapses with the uh, fibers that's the autonomic fiber that's coming from the viscera and the uh, somatic fibers that are coming from the skin Viscera have few sensory fibers, except for pain. So viscera has few, uh, even for pain, they have few uh, sensory fibers, except for pain, they have some pain. Now, visceral pain are slow pain, they are throbbing, they are uh, aggravating, they are uh, uh, summating, summation of pain fibers, because the chemicals that are released they stimulate the uh, pain fibers uh, because now pain uh, receptors are not that uh, dense in the viscera you can cut here they can cut the viscera hi this is the viscera here they can cut the viscera here by the scalpel without feeling pain because you have to feel pain in the viscera you have to stimulate larger area of the viscera larger area of the viscera so highly localized damage of an organ may result in little pain highly localized damage widespread damage can lead to severe pain because it's going to summate summation here referred localized to the dermatomes from the embryologic life we will see it after a while heart localized to the neck and shoulder and arm left arm of course stomach localized to uh, the area above the umbilicus colon localized to the areas below the umbilicus localization uh, depends on the uh, dermatomes Here the dermatomes, look here. The uh, pain from the heart is coming to the uh, neck, uh, sternum here, and left upper limb. Here this is the heart, left upper limb. Okay, this is an area of pain from the heart. This is an area pain from the esophagus here, the esophagus. This is a pain, the umbilicus, an area from the appendix. The appendix here. This is the appendix. Because the appendix is derived from T10. Appendix is derived from T10. Thoracic uh, segments 10. From where the umbilicus is derived. And the umbilicus is derived from T10. 
so a pain from the appendix is felt as if it is slow pain and slow chronic uh, it's difficult to describe it around the umbilicus then after a while this pain it comes down because it's going to when the appendix is inflamed large area of the appendix is going to be uh, damaged and this will stimulate the uh, peritoneum the peritoneum is supplied by somatic nerves so when the peritoneum is inflamed around the umbilicus then the pain of the appendix uh, i mean appendix the pain from the appendix is felt first of all around the umbilicus because it's going to be a visceral pain, slow pain, referred pain. And once the, um, the appendix is going to be inflamed, it's going to uh, surrounded by the uh, peritoneum. And the peritoneum now around the umbilicus is going to be felt in the uh, right lower quadrant, right lower quadrant. So in that case, uh, the person knows that this is appendix so appendix pain from the appendix is felt around the umbilicus first then it goes descend down to the right lower quadrant because the inflamed appendix will uh, stimulate pain fibers from the peritoneum now uh, ureters here it's around the genitalia around genitalia is referred colon is down below the umbilicus liver and gallbladder it is in the right and even in the shoulder here sometimes shoulder this depends on the dermatome looks to the here dermatome areas this is the areas this is a kidney pain from the kidney in the loin pain from the liver uh, and gallbladder in the shoulder right shoulder pain from the heart it is in the uh, sternum the chest here and the left uh, our limb and uh, pain from the appendix here appendix is around the uh, umbilicus and down to the right lower quadrant pain from the ureter is going to be in the genitalia around it urinary bladder these are all around the areas this is coming from the same uh, dermatomes look here t10 here the umbilicus area it's the same area from where the appendix is derived. The appendix is derived from the mesoderm of T10 and the skin of the umbilicus is derived from the ectoderm of T10. T10 here is supplied, skin supplied by the T10 skeletal nerve or somatic nerve and T10 appendix is derived from uh, the T10 uh, autonomic nerves. This is the areas here, the same thing for L5 and the uh, the same area of the genitalia here where the ureters are supplied this is the heart C8, T1, T2 so visceral pain are usually felt as referred pain what might uh, excite, what might initiate visceral pain? visceral pain uh, can be caused by ischemia decrease in the uh, decrease low blood flow or decrease in the blood flow to the tissue and decrease in the blood flow might increase the uh, 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 might cause damage tissue damage tissue damage might release might release chemicals and these chemicals will excite the uh, f uh, nerve the free nerve endings uh, of, of pain receptors chemical irritation like say perforated peptic ulcer or uh, coming from the uh, biliary system bile or acids this might uh, irritate 
the uh, peritoneum irritate the viscera and causing visceral pain spasm of a heroic organ so a certain constriction or contraction of the uh, small intestine so small intestine contraction is called intestinal colic small intestine contraction causing mechanical uh, stimulation small intestine contraction causing mechanical stimulation of the free nerve endings they press on the free nerve endings so either it is chemical irritation or swallowing or over distension over distension the same thing they press on the pressure on the hollow organ they press they increase the pressure on the wall pressure on wall so either the stimulus can be uh, due to ischemia uh, sometimes infarction chemical irritation spasm colics over distension okay now we come to the uh, second part of sensation that are transmitted through the uh, anterior lateral spinothalamic pathway which is the thermal sensation thermal sensation could be cold or warm usually there are more cold receptors than warm and so the density of cold receptors in any area is more than the density of warm receptors density of cold receptor varies uh, in, in, in between areas of our body but it is its distribution is the same like tactile receptors it is more in the lips and fingertips lowest in the trunk uh, freezing cold and burning hot are the same sensation because of the pain freezing cold and burning hot they are going to stimulate pain receptors so pain receptors from freezing cold or pain receptors from burning hot are stimulated in that case they are going to stimulate pain Now, cold receptors respond to uh, uh, temperature from 7 to 45 degrees centigrade with a peak response of around 45 degrees. Warm receptor responds to uh, temperature from 30 to 49 with a, a peak response around 44 or 45 that might cause even pain there. The relative degree of stimulation of the receptors determine the temperature sensation. We will come to that. It's like uh, when we discuss the feeling of position, it is a combination of stimulation of different receptors. There are four receptors, warm receptor, cold receptor, freezing hot, freezing cold. So it depends on the uh, combination of stimulation of these receptors. So the relative degree of stimulation of receptor determine the temperature. Thermal receptors adapt to the stimulus but not completely thermal receptors and uh, whether it is hot or cold say it is this is number of impulses here So if you have, uh, say this is the number of impulses in this receptor, if you, this is say uh, 15 degrees say, and if you increase the temperature to 20, this is then the uh, impulses, number of impulses increase 
and then you feel it too hot then after a while there is a decrease because of adaptation so this is say 25 here this is the level of 25 so to start there you feel it as if it is 25 then it comes to 20 degrees so this is kind of uh, adaptation fast and slow adaptation then the other way around the, when you come to down here the same thing decrease in the temperature then it goes here so this kind of adaptation you have adaptation of the receptors uh, uh, something fast adaptation to start and then slow adaptation but they don't adapt completely but not completely as you see this is the number of impulses here the number of impulses is it's, it's like everybody of us has uh, experienced this if you uh, are going to have a shower uh, you feel to start with that if the uh, water of the shower is a little bit hot when you put yourself under the shower you feel that the shower is too hot then after a while you think no it's not that hot it's okay I can I can withstand it I can bear it okay so this is the first of all when you put yourself under the hot shower you felt it it is if, if it is too hot but after a while because of adaptation of these receptors you did not you don't you feel it as if it is not that hot it is okay or when you put your hand in a cold water you feel it, it is too cold but if you stay if you uh, if, um, put your hand in the cold water and you um, don't remove it from the cold water after a while while your hand is in the cold water you don't feel, you feel it as if it is not that cold it's okay i can bear it why because there is adaptation of the receptors so the receptors they adapt as if they they feel it as if it is not that cold but they don't these receptors they don't adapt completely they don't adapt completely remember that pain receptors they almost non-adapting receptors they don't adapt pain receptors this is how you feel different temperature the same thing like position so any temperature let's like say uh, uh, 32 here 32 temperature will stimulate the uh, cold receptor here at certain uh, uh, rate and stimulate the uh, uh, warm receptor at other rate so this combination of warm receptor and its specific for say 33 33 degrees if you are stimulating say 37 here so 37 37 degrees here thirty seven it is it's different thirty seven different in cold cold receptor and a warm receptor so this combination here is for thirty seven degrees and this combination the green one the combination is for thirty three combination if you have uh, 52 then 52 they will stimulate the heat pain receptors and this is their uh, number of impulses number of impulses per second so the relative as we said here the relative degree of stimulation of the receptors determines the temperature sensation the relative degree of stimulation combinations of stimulation okay so we have four receptors cold pain cold receptors warm receptors heat pain receptors this is one of the theories how we can differentiate different temperature and the same theory like differentiating also position you remember position 
discriminated at the level of say thalamus too many neurons some neurons they increase their uh, increase their uh, uh, level of impulses by extension others decrease by extension others increase by flexion others decrease by flexion the same thing a combination of impulses mechanism of stimulation by the uh, temperature cold and warm receptor they, they change the metabolic rate of the receptor by changing the metabolic rate you change the uh, permeability of ions in the receptor by changing the metabolic the permeability of ion you change the receptor potential and you change the action potential that might be uh, formed in the afferent neuron that is connected to these receptors so this changes the rate this changes the rate of intracellular reaction and uh, this will cause a change in the receptor potential thank you very much this is all for this session okay